yesterday i was in conversation with uh, visual butch uh, as a part of the icf conclave on do institutions need coaching after sharing my thoughts on this topic i am tempted to share an exclusive video on my thoughts on the need for coaching of institutions uh, yesterday i started in a with a very interesting uh, experience we had with uh, uh, lawrence school sanawar where uh, in line sometime in 1975 shomi das the headmaster of that school invited ravi mathai to have a look at uh, the school and the way he was leading the school and uh, saying that uh, he was so happy he is doing an extremely good job he was being invited by administrative staff college and crt and so many places his teachers are doing well students are doing well but sometimes he feels that uh, he can't believe that he has been so successful so he suggested ravi mathai to visit the uh, school uh, ravi spent a few days there talked to the teachers observed the students and had a series of discussions with the house masters head master and so on and at the end of the uh, conversation ravi mathai apparently mentioned to shomi shomi that you are doing a great job your teachers are very happy with you your students are also doing well your results are good and uh, we find the atmosphere to be great there only one thing that i noticed as i talked to most of your faculty they seem to for uh, almost any thing that we suggest they seem to say that uh, let us check this with shomi which means that your success has created new dependencies on the part of the faculty and maybe they could take a lot more initiative and do many more things so shomi said so how do we go about doing this now this is also a problem sometimes i feel that uh, the institution has become too much dependent on me so i need to do something so ravi came back and we had an education systems group at uh, iim amdabad which consisted of uday parik ravi and myself we uh, designed a self renewal laboratory for the lawrence school sanawa we went to the school uh, morning of course the school used to function as usual and in a, across about five different afternoons we had uh, a number of a series of exercises conducted we got the school climate surveyed we administered quite a few of the psychometric tests and uh, we also got the uh, the teachers to work in groups there are group of house masters group of uh, teachers and group of different subject matter specialists and ask them to identify what is good in the school what is not so good in the school they did some kind of a sort analysis and their recommendations for the future to become even a better school so after this uh, diagnosis which we called as a self renewal laboratory and presenting to them the school climate uh, questionnaire feedback and so on we found that there are a lot of expectations unwritten unstated expectations of teachers from uh, the headmaster headmaster from the teachers or the house masters from the other teachers and so on i think there are different groups you know there are administrative group there are students uh, there are uh, other kind of groups and things like that so we had a series of role negotiation exercises to exchange views and ultimately the objective was to create some kind of a uh, more effective kind of uh, school just to mention a small thing i still recollect uh, most of the faculty said that uh, we whenever the headmaster goes uh, on tour we miss him we would like to be like him to be present more so that he can keep guiding us a lot more and the headmaster said that look you must know why i am going if i don't go out if i don't go to ncert go to staff college go to other places i don't get to know what is happening in the world i also participate in a rural development uh, exercise which is going on at swrc Thelonia, where uh, he used to be associated with when he was principal of the Mayo College. Uh, so I have all these things now. Then he countered the uh, the uh, faculty and asked them, which one of these do you think I should stop? There are some things which I will find it very difficult to nominate you. For example, I can't nominate you to NCERT because it is by invitation as a part of the innovations group. 
but I certainly can think of nominating you to go and do rural development work and so on. So there were like negotiation exercises, uh, groups were established and some of the teachers took charge of doing what Shomi Das was doing and Shomi Das put some counter demands. So there were at the end of these self-renewal exercises, there were self, uh, there were about 10 groups which started working on uh, different aspects of the school. Of course, a, a few months later, we happened to visit the school and listen to what the groups had to say, how much they have progressed, gave our sessions and so on. So if you look at this entire kind of an experience, this is what we may call as, uh, those days we called it self-renewal, we call it institutional coaching. I think all institutions need to look at themselves once in a while and get stimulated by outsiders who can diagnose the situation, who can tell you what is not what is wrong with you, what is good with you, what should be maintained, what more can be done. Because in coaching, we say coaching is nothing but uh, the science and the art of helping you to maximize your potential, discover your strong point, discover your areas you can improve and maximize your potential so that you can get the best out of yourself. What is true with individuals is also true with institutions. In fact, when you start getting into institutional level coaching, it's a, there's a lot of science that is available on how to coach institutions, may not be put in the same way. All that we have talked in earlier years about organization development, I think one of the earlier books that was written on OD uh, by Golambi Viske and others was on OD in schools, filled with a lot of uh, exercises and experiences. Um, when you do OD or when you do change management or when you do survey feedback or psychometric testing, etc., etc., you are doing nothing but, I think, coaching. Coaching is the science of helping people to discover the best in themselves. The big difference between individual coaching and institutional coaching is individual coaching focuses on individuals, whereas institutional coaching focuses on collectives. Certainly it focuses on individuals too, like headmaster as the leader, housemasters as leaders, or heads of departments as leaders, students as, uh, I think, leaders, learners, administrative staff and support staff as the leaders, managers, and things like that. So every entity, every stakeholder that is associated with an institution uh, need to be helped, coached, to discover where they are, what more they can do, and so on. So when you do a self-renewal or institutional coaching or you call it OD or whatever you call, the specialist requires a very similar kind of a knowledge and depth like an individual coach. You need to be a good listener, you need to be a good diagnostician, you need to also be responding, you need to empathize, you need to understand, you need to help the person or the institution to develop a series of activity plans or actions so that they can maximize their potential. I have found in my own work with various institutions, the self-renewal laboratories or, uh, or change management exercises are excellent tools of coaching an institution to maximize its own kind of potential. I had another interesting experience which I narrated in that uh, session. And the experience was with the project impact. Project Impact was a project which was started by uh, Government of India with assistance from World Bank and Swiss Development Agency. This was almost in the mid-90s when uh, uh, N. Vittal was the Secretary of Electronics and of course there were many others who participated in this. The project aimed at uh, providing uh, financial support, software support, hardware support and all the other forms of support for a group of polytechnics and engineering colleges. They use IIT Delhi, IIT Bombay and uh, Indian Institute of Science as resource centers. With the help of these three resource centers, they wanted to uplift the teaching of electronics and computer science education in these institutions. At the end of five years, when they have given lots of uh, financial assistance to each one of these institutions, they discovered some of these institutions used fully whatever funds were given to them and were demanding more funds. Whereas some other institutions could not even use a part of uh, the aid that was assistance that was given to them. 
so that goes to uh, swiss development agency world bank uh, to think about what makes a difference why is it some institutions are able to use the funds or assistance that is given why whereas some others are not able to so they asked us at tvrls to conduct a research study and we conducted a study in which i think jay indresan from uh, uh, nupa nipa joined uh, mg jomon who was working with us at uh, uh, tvrls joined so three of us constituted a team we developed a, a 120 item organizational or institutional environment survey this questionnaire was developed after interacting with some of the faculty students alumni of some of these institutions to measure various dimensions of the institutional culture which include the leadership culture learning culture support facilities like library culture laboratory culture and so on and this questionnaire was used for support staff for students for teachers for all stakeholders that were a part of these institutions and when we administered this and we studied the utilization of funds we discovered a very interesting correlation between the institutional environment and uh, the utilization of funds and we concluded that those institutions that have a very positive climate on this questionnaire that we have developed on variety of dimensions uh, had more capability to utilize the funds which means that they were more innovative they were receptive they were learning and in turn benefiting the students and that enhanced the placement opportunities and things of that kind so this is another form of coaching and once we got the results uh, swiss development agency uh, co for cooperation got all these institutions rooms we surveyed and started a conducting a series of seminars which i now call them as coaching seminars mss vardhan who used to help them at that time actively participated in this indian institute of science iit bombay and iit delhi faculty who were involved also participated and essentially this was meant to help people uh, to understand their own kind of a climate and uh, help them to improve the climate so that they can in future whenever opportunities come up can maximize their own kind of potential so this is another coaching uh, uh, help that we were able to provide so in uh, in conclusion what i want to say is we have lots and lots of experiences available on institutional coaching when you coach an institute you are coaching the leaders you are coaching various uh, heads of departments various stakeholders you are even coaching the alumni support staff and a whole lot of other people and when you do this kind of a coaching of collectives you are having maximizing the impact just imagine a school gets helped and a hundreds of even thousands of students go through the school so is an engineering college or a polytechnic hundreds and thousands of people go through this so one small thing that you can improve in an institution can go a long way in changing the lives of people it may enhance the quality of students it may enhance their placement opportunities it may enhance the productivity of the faculty it may create new systems of performance management it may build a new brand and things of that kind a whole lot of things just as individuals become better leaders better versions of themselves through individual coaching institutions can become better versions of themselves so institutional coaching so i would strongly recommend institutions to get into this the tools that we have developed are available in ima working papers measuring and managing institutional environment if you go to the net and type the details you will get it otherwise you can write to me but i also think that uh, organizations like uh, agencies like uh, icf should develop a new cadre of people who can become experts in institutional coaching not too many institutions have gotten into this many institutions are not aware that they need uh, help they are even shy like just what what is happening in the industrial sector so i would strongly recommend icf and other agencies to think of starting a stream of building institutional coaches and institutional coaching and build a body of knowledge if you have any uh, interest in this please do write to me at tvrao@tvrao.com thank you very much for listening to this